George D. or Sherlock Holmes? Which of these two early literary detectives is greater? Hello, I'm Dr. Guili Sui. Let us find an answer to that question. Judge D is a character from an anonymously written 18th century Chinese novel titled Di Gong An. The English translator of this book, Robert Van Gulik, was so inspired by it that he went on to write 16 novels and 8 short stories starring D. But the original D was drawn from a historical figure, a real official of the Tang and Zhou dynasty named Di Renjie. Sherlock Holmes, on the other hand, is entirely fictional. This private investigator was created by the late 19th and early 20th century British author Arthur Conan Doyle. Doyle had written a total of four novels and 56 short stories featuring Holmes. The Londoner first appeared in the novel A Study in Scarlet, published in 1887, and made his last appearance in the short story The Adventure of Showscombe Old Place from 1927. Two figures of Doyle's time gave him the inspiration for creating Holmes. One was Edgar Allan Poe's character C. Auguste Dupin, or what is now widely considered as the West's first detective stories. The other was an actual army surgeon named Joseph Bell, for whom Dole had worked before as a clerk. Holmes has an equally well-loved assistant, Dr. John H. Watson, at first his roommate, then his friend and biographer. Almost all of Holmes's mysteries are conveyed to us by this former army surgeon and war veteran. Watson acts as every reader's entry point into how different Holmes's thinking is compared to that of an ordinary person. D has assistance too. Many more, in fact. As a magistrate at Changping, D commands a host of constables, although he relies most on four. They are Sergeant Hon Liang and his lieutenants Ma Rong, Chiao Tai and Tao Gan. Hong serves as his advisor and was an old family servant. The other three are reformed criminals who bring distinct skills to his service. Ex-highway robbers Ma Rong and Chiao Tai are great fighters, while Tao Gan, the con man, now uses his wit for good. D and Holmes are similar in that both possess extraordinary skill in deduction. Holmes turns to physical clues to help construct for him a sense of the truth. He famously describes to Watson the difference between them. You see, but you do not observe. In Boscombe Valley Mystery, Holmes is able to conclude from mere footprints that the murderer must be a tall left-handed man with a right limb, a grey cloak and shooting boots who smokes Indian cigars and had a cigar holder and a blunt pen knife. D is more of a criminal psychologist and makes character assessment with an aim to fathom the extent of culpability. He assesses his characters by looking at their social behaviours and interactions. In the so-called case of the strange corpse, D deduces long before he has proof that Mrs. Cho killed her husband in view of her rudeness to her mother-in-law and on the basis of that too, her mother-in-law's simple-mindedness. For Holmes, this way of discerning is defective since one ought not to theorize without data. But D works by intuition, a power Holmes is not particularly good at. In The Adventure of Yellow Face, a wife's excessive spending and visits to an abandoned house with a yellow mast figure, 
leads him to establish that blackmail is involved. It turns out that the figure in hiding is really Mrs. Monroe's daughter from her first marriage, an interracial one. Both Dee and Holmes are men of science. Dee possesses enough medical knowledge to be able to perform autopsy. Like Holmes, he is familiar with the chemicals and cures of the day. Holmes further uses then cutting edge forensics such as fingerprint analysis. He can also read handwriting and is adept at cryptology, the science of code making and breaking. These graphs of human psychology gives him an edge at outwitting his opponents. He is able to use supernatural beliefs to prey on the minds of an otherwise unbending, manipulative, highly intelligent criminal, Mrs. Cho. You see, in ancient China, the law could not punish anyone without a full confession of the crimes. The resorts to making Mrs. Cho believe that she has died and gone before Yan Luo Wang in order to extract uh, her confession. Both D and Holmes uses disguises, but not always to great effect. D disguises well as a traveling physician, but less so as a silk merchant. Holmes is a master of several disguises. He can do a sailor, an opium smoker, an old book collector, or even an old woman. But all his skills cannot fool a trained performer, such as the only opponent he fails to outwit, Irene Adler. All this may make us regard Holmes as the more talented detective. And yet remember, Holmes always solves his cases one at a time. D enters world literature as a crime solver who can somehow solve three mysteries simultaneously, correctly. But D also relies more bizarrely on signs and dreams on top of regular methods. When he is too stumped by a case, he turns to sleep in order to let information unlock hidden connections in his head. This unlocking being understood as heaven's work. A dream can give him clues about what the future holds or verses to rethink characters. You see, this objective is not merely to uncover truth, but to be an implement of divine justice. As long as his intentions are noble, he believes that heaven will aid his quest should he hit an impasse. This motto as a magistrate is, we read, to demonstrate clearly the just retribution meted out by heaven, never failing in its hair-fine accuracy. For Holmes, detection is pursued less out of duty than out of passion. The Londoner is highly inquisitive and cannot endure boredom. Though it is unclear which comes first, he openly remarks, I abhor the dull routine of existence. I crave for mental exaltation. This is why I have chosen my own particular profession, or rather created it, for I am the only one in the world. But D has one thing Holmes does not have, judicial power. While Holmes does pursue his cases to the end, and sometimes let his culprits go, or he lets them or others punish them as they deem fit. He does not always involve the police. Some of his offenders never confess or need to. Some are found guilty only after death. D, on the other hand, is obliged to punish 
all criminals he has discovered. He will even torture those who get in the way of his investigations so that law and order remain feared. While Holmes has the luxury of compassion, D must stay impartial, at times at a risk to his own reputation and life. In fact, the power to torture comes double-edged. If someone dies before a confession is extracted, the magistrate will lose his head. Such are the rules to play by. Both D and Holmes therefore take different risks. D most tense drama involves being unable to sentence Mrs. Cho, who while refusing to confess, sways public opinion against the court. She repeatedly threatens to end his career and life. Holmes can be so caught up that he chooses to risk his clients' lives, as in uh, The Hound of Baskervilles, or even his own, as in his battle of wits with the criminal mastermind, Professor James Moriarty. So, who do you think is the greater detective now? I have no clear answer, really. What is yours? <laughs>